What's up guys? Welcome back to another video here once again with Danny. If you're new here, my name is Miles. I'm a 22 year old full-time Amazon seller. That's what we talk about here on the channel. We're also posting every single day of July, so make sure to subscribe below. And let's get into Danny's story going from selling books, having a bulk book warehouse, which didn't end up really working out um, due to major world events as well as just scaling issues. Uh, so we'll get a little bit into that as well as how he found his current business model, which is um, you know online arbitrage and mainly wholesale, actually doing over 100K in revenue each and every single month, which is amazing. So we're, I'm working on getting to those levels. So we'll talk about kind of scaling strategies, the creative ways you use to find wholesales and just that transition and kind of mindset shift out of books to going into actually wholesale and all that. So you wanna give a little bit of background on how you found books and all that just quick before we get started? Yeah, so I mean books, obviously as you guys know from the previous video, I found books through Miles. I just started grinding books, Goodwills, got the bulk book, bulk book business going and then just kind of moved on from there. And we actually went to high school together, a fun fact. Yeah. So you kind of saw me like, we weren't like super close, but you had known that I resold and everything because yeah. we like kind of talked about it here and there. Um, so you like kind of knew it was up. And then once you start, you saw me actually, you know, make the page, the Bullshit Miles page. And this was about fall 29th and then you went ahead and got yeah. started. You saw my post and you reached out and I think you might've even led with like, I ordered my EOEO scanner yeah. already, which shows me like, I get a lot of messages from people saying they're gonna start and this guy started before he even told me he was gonna start, I think. So it really paid off. And then you just kind of went deep into doing library sales and uh, thrift stores mainly. And then what did you do after that? After- I was well, cherry college. picking and then you went, still in college, fun fact, doing a lot of numbers with all this stuff, but you were cherry picking thrift stores and you went to the warehouse, mm -hmm. tried that out, pandemic hit and everything. Pandemic hit, Amazon closed down my ability to send in books. Yeah. And since, like I told you, essential items they yes, said correct. sending in so you with the warehouse with thousands of books and giant gaylords which for those of you who don't know are like massive things of books um thousands or hundreds of pounds each probably close to hundreds of thousands of books or hundreds or thousands of books and you thousands of books i had about i had about three pallets it was about three thousand books that had to be sent to yes Amazon. and you weren't able to send that in mm -hmm. liquidity issues like you just mentioned so you kind of you know have taken one of the more unique wholesale routes of anyone i've ever talked to and i We'll say I haven't talked to a ton of successful sales, you definitely being one of them. But you want to talk about a little bit about why you went ahead and made that transition from doing books to wholesale, kind of the mindset shift, and then really just the difference in the business models. Yeah, so basically once I got into the warehouse and I started really diving into the bulk books, I kind of quickly realized that I did want to eventually transition to wholesale. And that was my idea the whole time. It was to build off enough capital with the bulk books and then transition into wholesale. And kind of once the pandemic hit and I wasn't able to send in any more essential items, that really forced my hand into moving into essential items, which at that time was, I was trying to wholesale a lot of grocery products. Yeah, and for the, still to give context, so it's probably like October, November, 2019 was when you first got started yes. at Warehouse. January, February? Uh, like beginning of February. Yeah, and then obviously pandemic hits early March and or everything, January. but you really like, same thing, you can't, not same thing, but you guys get the idea. Yeah. You just kept rolling with it and everything. And for those of you who don't know, you want to give a little bit of overview of the wholesale model and just how it, and when we'll talk about like how it's very different from the book model. Yeah, so I mean, the wholesale model, when I was doing it was basically find a wholesaler, build a relationship with that salesman or saleswoman, and really try to negotiate discounts on the price list that they give you yeah. and then go from there. And the big thing, the difference between like wholesale and like an arbitrage model, retail or online arbitrage, which is a lot of what I do right now is you can actually go ahead and negotiate prices and mm -hmm. they want you to buy a lot because they're yeah. in the business of selling bulk like B2B when, you know, websites that are, you know, Walmart, Target, those kind of stores and websites, they're at B2C. So they're not looking to sell everything to one right. person. So it's a lot more scalable. So you're able to order, you know, hundreds, theoretically in thousands of a single yep. type of unit. Yep. Set back orders. If it's good, well, and back order. Okay, see that's, I'm not super familiar with that type of stuff with also obviously know what that is, but it's just interesting to, you know, hear the differing mindset. Cause with books, you're going out and finding books paying you know a dollar 25 mm -hmm. cents 50 cents of these thrift stores library sales gradually buying gaylords for how much were you paying or per uh, pound? seven cents a pound seven cents a pound so that comes out to what does that come out to per gaylord typically oh, um, it's a while ago I, I, not yeah, a lot not 100? a lot like yeah theoretically it should be gaylord. very profitable but yeah. then you you have to consider like the warehouse cost pallet jack yeah. I mean, you I, have. It, it is definitely profitable however there's a lot of intensive labor that i didn't anticipate involved in it and 
while it is profitable, but like I said, just the labor is too much and you could be spending that sweat equity basically on better things that can make you more money, such as wholesale. Yeah, and you've been smart to get really creative with using credit lines and everything to scale as yes. well. You wanna talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so basically while I was transitioning to wholesale, I was still leveraging capital that I had. A lot of it was actually from, from Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> But then I quickly <laughs> found out about uh, Amer- <laughs> I found out about American Express cards and their model of how when you let's say you max out a business card and then pay it off immediately or at the end of the month they'll almost double your limit and kind of keep doing that and that's how I was able to really scale my business. Yeah, just kind of taking advantage of like other people's money essentially. Obviously, yes. only doing that responsible. That's yeah, for yes. uh, you know a certain type of person that really knows their numbers and all that. But in my personal situation, that's been really effective as well. And I know business Amex is I'm using the blue business plus and the business gold. I believe you're a business gold gold user as part. well. Yeah, the business gold is really good if you like want to spend a lot. And then the blue business plus is better if you're kind of a lower uh, type of spending business owner, like maybe like under six figures a year yeah. on that kind of stuff. And I'll actually have a full video. I haven't, I haven't put one out yet surprisingly on different types of credit card rewards and the stuff I do with it. But I recommend when I do, you check that out because there's a lot of like kind of cool tricks you can do with all that. And what do you think like has really been the biggest difference between books and wholesale? I kind of have it in my head. I'll go into after you give yours. Um, wholesale is a little bit easier because you, you see the numbers before you get the product. So with books, you don't know how good the Gaylord is going to, or the Gaylord is the big thing of books. You don't know how good it's going to be until you actually have scanned through it. Because it could already be scanned through by someone and they didn't say it. Well, that, and you just don't, it's just kind of the, it's, it's almost like, it's not a lottery, but it's, they're donated books. So you don't know. That's a good point. You don't know how good the Gaylord is going to be. Some are going to be better than others. Whereas wholesale, you see the numbers on the spreadsheets before you order it. So you know what your profit margin should be even accounting for if the price drops or even goes up on Amazon. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, so it's interesting stuff, kind of bringing some more, because I'm actually working on a little bit getting into wholesale on my own. So I'll be documenting that on the channel as well. And it's been great to have you on once again, kind of high school acquaintance turned Amazon seller friends. Now we're a few few years older, but he's doing some good stuff. Working on getting you a little bit more active on social media. Who knows if that'll actually happen, but it's Uh, good you're able to drop some value here on the channel. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. We're posting every single day of July, so make sure to subscribe below. Subscribe, post notifications. All that stuff, man. So yeah, thank you guys so much for spending a little bit of time uh, with us tonight. Getting close to midnight here and on the East Coast here. Um, But we're making sure we get this content and this value, and so make sure to subscribe below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.